Hello YouTube. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, XOR ciphers. Now, an interesting thing about these ciphers is uh, a little bit of a departure from what we had talked about before, where we were substituting uh, alphabets and letters for each individual one. Uh, these ciphers require that we use uh, a character encoding. Now the character encoding that I'm going to be using is ASCII, however this does work with uh, basically every other character encoding, uh, because they all essentially do the same thing. They turn a character into a series of numbers. So, if we just look at my name here, I've gone ahead and used an ASCII lookup table to convert these to a binary string of numbers. Now, these numbers are all eight digits long, uh, as per the ASCII standard, uh, and they all translate into these letters. So now what we want to do is we want to do what's called an exclusive OR operation on these. Now what an exclusive OR operation is, is when you have two numbers, you only write a 1 if each, if the bits are exclusively different from each other. So that means for this one, it's a 1. For this one, it's a 1. For this one, because neither of those are 1, it's a 0. And for this, because both of them are 1, this is the exclusive part of exclusive OR. These are zeros. So this is a really basic operation that's part of uh, a lot of different calculations in computing science. But this is the basis of what our cipher is. So going back to my name here, I've encoded them with the ASCII strings, the ASCII binary strings. So now what we do is we go through and we come up with some sort of uh, key phrase or cipher uh, key. So what I'm going to use here is I'm just going to use 10, 10, 10, 10, right? So eight characters. Uh, it's, it has to be the exact same length as the message. Uh, if it's longer, you just cut it off, right? So now with this, what we get is we get uh, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. All right, so now we've got another eight character binary string, and this encodes to something else. It doesn't matter, these characters uh, could actually be outside of what the visible character range is in an ASCII table, so I wouldn't bother trying to convert these into characters when you're trying to actually send your ciphertext if you are using this. Uh, it's not that important, but what you do know is that this is now different than this, and we have done some sort of process to it. Uh, now, this is not a particularly secure cipher, and you will see that in a minute. Uh, so now, if I go through and I do that to all of the characters in my name, I end up with this. And what I've done is I've also gone and looked up the ASCII tables, and they just happened to be uh, written characters. However, there are things like uh, null characters, there's start of heading, start of text, end of text, end of transmission. There's lots of different characters in the ASCII data set, and you could end up with those, but just for my name, it just happened to end up with these. So now, if we want to go ahead and decrypt this, what we can do is do the exact same operation with the exact same key, 10, 10, 10, 10, and this is the first character here. If we go back and we do that, we get 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. Now, if we go back and look at what we had in our original text, this 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. So now we've basically converted to and from a ciphertext using just exclusive OR operations. Now, these, this method of encoding and uh, modifying things is actually how uh, a lot of the new versions of encryption work. But the problem with doing just this is that if we don't randomize our passkey every single time, what will actually what is actually possible is we know that this is that weird E character that we had with the little accent on top. If we actually take our plain text and our cipher text and we do the exact same operation to them again, you'll see that we get 10, 10, 10, 10, which is our key. 
So if we've successfully managed to get a plain text as well as a cipher text, we now have the key which we can go back and decrypt all of our messages with. So when we're doing this sort of encryption, what we need to do is we need to make sure that this key is randomized every single time and we don't reuse keys. And that's the end of this particular video. Uh, if you like my content, please like and subscribe, and we will see you next time.